Hi everyone, uh, Callum here from FS Elite, live from FSCon 2017. I'm joined by Stephen Hood from Dovetail Games. Um, Stephen, do you want to just introduce yourself to the viewers? Sure, yes, uh, my name's Stephen Hood, or I go by Steve Hood in the office, or that guy that's made that decision. <laughs> I'm the executive producer on Flight Sim World. Uh, I've been at Dovetail Games now for a couple of years. Uh, I joined as creative director. I spent almost all of my time on Flight Sim because that's where my, my passion lies and I am the guy that you blame if you don't like something in Flight Sim World. <laughs> so, well, firstly, congratulations on the release of Flight Sim World. Thank you. Um, I imagine it's been a very rocky development process <laughs> over the last couple of years for you. Um, so now that it's kind of in its early stages for you guys, what's the, um, what's the atmosphere like in the office at the moment? The atmosphere is really good. Now, you, you might be surprised to hear that. I mean, yes, we've spent two years of of hard graft and there's blood, sweat and tears that we put into this project and it's very much the beginning for us and really the atmosphere has probably changed ever so slightly where everybody was eyes down trying to get the main simulator ready for early access launch mm -hmm. and now we're going through this uh, transition period where we're switching out of making the core product ready for launch and actually I'd probably say work starting to work on some of the more interesting features that we really want to deliver to the community to positively differentiate flights in world over the competition. So can you give us any insight into those features you're looking to work on? I can give you some insight, yes. So, for example, one of the things that we did on the, the core product was put a lot of time and effort into trying to make the core aircraft as good as they could be. Mm -hmm. And instead of spreading ourselves too thin and working in too many different areas where you, know, you would have just noted, noticed a 2% uplift versus what had gone previously. We try to segment our efforts and spend time on particular areas. So I don't think it's, it's too big a surprise for me to say that I really want to overhaul the weather engine. Okay. Uh, quite noticeably so. And we've been spending a lot of time looking at that and working on it, figuring out what we want to do, who we can go to, who, who we could partner with in order to bring about change. Um, we're still working on that area, but uh, I really wanted to capture the aircraft, and we ticked that one. I want to overhaul the, the weather engine so that we can get the skies and the clouds and all the effects that go with it. For example, you would have seen people positively chatting about the rain bead effect that we put on mm -hmm. the aircraft. That for us is just the beginning of where we want to go. Yeah, There's a lot more to do there. And then we want to start looking at the world and the airports and everything else around it. Um, so the development team now are, are doing what I regard as the cool stuff, the things that really make a big difference. And uh, in different groups and different teams are working on individual features. We have an internal roadmap that we haven't publicised yet because we're still allowing ourselves a certain amount yeah. of flexibility to go, wow, that's amazing, or that's slightly better than we were hoping at this stage. Maybe that will be released first rather than committing to too many things. But um, there's cool stuff that's coming out, and we're going to ramp the core sim up for free um, ahead of, you know, distributing a load of DLC. This this for us is about making Flight Sim World um, ready to exit early access. And this is this is the point of early access I guess for you guys is to firstly release a product and to get it out there and to gather feedback from from the community and to see how you can improve it in the future. Sure. Yeah, I mean there's a lot of, of chatter that goes on and that's great. You know, we, we've worked you know, pretty much in isolation for a couple of years on getting what we thought we needed to do in order to have the, the sim ready. Uh, but now it's out in early access, that enables us to have that communication with the community. And let's be honest, everybody in the community has got an opinion on what we should and should not be doing. Mm -hmm. And that's great, we listen to all of that, we collate that feedback. I read everything that goes on on the internet, um, for better or worse. And, uh, and that's great, that actually gives us the motivation to continue doing what we're doing. We spent a lot of effort in the past two years, but you know, th this is the next round we transition into, right, how do we make this a beautiful simulator? Fantastic. And I guess you said you've read a lot of comments and you've had a lot of feedback from, from people online. I guess some of the biggest comments you've seen is probably from third party support. Mm -hmm. So I have to ask because the rest of the community <coughs> are asking as well. Sure. So it is a defining element of what makes a flight sim great. And I mean, that could be said to anything in the world. You know, people go to where the developers are developing for. So what what can you say to help address concerns from the community that perhaps third parties aren't willing to develop for Flight Sim World? There were concerns from the third parties? <laughs> um, 
look, the, the, a lot of people, I think, jump the gun mm -hmm. and are more than happy to just talk straight to the public uh, and probably have got a bunch of things wrong. Um, we have been talking to a lot of the third parties, some that we did reach out to several times that are willing to talk a lot publicly before really having appropriate conversations with us. We've taken a step back. We're quite happy to let people chat about things, um, let the dust settle, and then the conversations resume about how do we get the best third parties involved in, in FSW. Um, for me, it's about uh, having individual discussions with those developers one-to-one, -one, and that's one of the reasons that I would come to Flight SimCon and, and the rest of the, um, the core FSW team turn up here so we can have those conversations in person, yep. not just on forums mm. or on email, but we can have you know face-to-face -face conversations and address any fears that it may have. We want to basically uh, deliver Flight Sim on the Steam platform along mm -hmm. with any future content that people may wish to purchase, uh, so that it's a cleaner environment for them to purchase, download and just enjoy yep. rather than downloading from lots of different sites, trying to become you know, a wizard at keeping the simulator <laughs> running and all sorts of things. So, like, all the legacy problems that we looked at when we first got into the space, we wanted to clean that up yep. and that's what we're trying to do. And inevitably there are some things that we detach ourselves from in order to take a step forward in different areas like rendering of gauges in aircraft or the performance of the aircraft or the, the visual techniques that we use for the renderer. There are, there are changes coming and it isn't an easy switch. We're not just taking the FSX content and chucking it into mm -hmm. FSW. Um, and I, I think turning up at these events and having those conversations, fears are allayed and uh, we're in this I think for the right reasons. Excellent. And so, you know, there are concerns, obviously, but then you've also worked with a numerous amount of third parties and you already have that content built directly into the mm. sim. So how, how did those conversations go and what kind of made you choose the partners you've chosen to work with to already integrate that to the sim? Um, I, I think there's been a bit of give and take in those early days where, you know, we were absolutely aware of the fact that if we wanted to change some of the technology, in the, the, the core simulator and FSX and turn it into FSW. Uh, we needed to work with some partners who were willing to put the effort in on their side in order to address the differences and take advantage of the new technology. Mm. It isn't something that they do for free. We had to work with them, we incentivized them, we wanted to um, integrate third party content in the very beginning so that we knew what it took to produce the aircraft to a certain standard and set the benchmark, certainly for the aircraft, um, going forwards. Great. So I think a lot of the comments you've received as well have been quite positive in terms of the validity of like, the GA aircraft as well, because that's been a heavy focus for you guys it as has, well. It has, it has, yes. Um, and some of the videos I've seen, the footage out there as well, have really highlight the extensive work that you guys have really put into building really beautiful looking sim already so mm. it's really exciting to see kind of where you go mm. in the future as well. It is I, and I hope that people notice that that in the areas where we've said we were going to concentrate yep. we've made a real positive difference mm -hmm. it's just that we can't concentrate everywhere to begin with I think sometimes people imagine that Dovetail is this billion dollar corporation and I've got thousands of developers <laughs> all with the appropriate skills to make the best flight simulator day one we haven't. The reality is we have a small but targeted team and we're still recruiting for that team in order to get the right people on board to make the right kind of difference. And actually coming to Flight SimCon and meeting some of the, the people that I consider to be experts here enables us to have further conversations about you know people beta testing things or providing their input. We will do this bit by bit and we will turn that, that spotlight onto features that we really want to differentiate and yep. you'll see them rolling out in the next few months. And again, this is why it's in early access and not just released as a, a full product as well. Sure. So, obviously we're here at Flight SimCon. There's multiple different um, simulator developers here as well. Mm -hmm. So without kind of turning this into like any sort of battle, <coughs> but we've got X-Plane here, we've got Lockheed Martin, we've prepared as well. So what thoughts do you and maybe the rest of the team have on like the competing simulators as well? Um. Lots of different thoughts on that. <laughs> I mean, I, I think competition is quite healthy. Mm -hmm. And I would certainly be the first person to suggest that uh, some of those uh, 
do we call them competition? Actually, internally, we don't actually call them competition, so let's just clear that up. Internally, for the business, we don't consider the likes of prepared or explained to be competitors for our space. And there are, there are a number of reasons for that. From a development perspective, uh, certainly we look at them, otherwise we'd be burying our heads in the sand just imagining that we're the best, what's the point of that? Yeah. Um, I've been incredibly impressed with um, what Austin and these guys have done with X-Plane. Uh, for me, that kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, I'm really happy with what they're doing. That's a, a great sim to enjoy. Uh, Lockheed and Prepared, um, maybe they don't focus on it in the same way that we do, so I think their rate of development isn't huge at the moment. Okay. But it really doesn't matter to me what they're doing. All that matters is that FSW is able to offer everybody in the community the flight sim experience that they want. So regardless of what they're up to, we have to make a stronger flight sim. Uh, my intention is to do so, so that people buy into us and not explain or, or prepare. Well, that's quite a positive thing, I imagine, for, for you and the guys to be doing, because if you're constantly monitoring what everyone else was doing, then, you know, like you said, you have your spotlights. So if you yeah. try to do everything, then potentially you Sure. I, I, I don't think people need you know, a slightly modified version of prepared or explain. You can already get those things. Yeah. So we're, we're looking for ways to differentiate. And at the same time, if there's a, if there's a component or feature that they've got that everybody likes, and I, I hear you know, some of the feedback to that extent, we will look to capitalise on that and integrate it into FSW. What I don't want you to have to do is run loads of different sims to get the complete experience that you might want at ev any given time. That just feels like a mess. Yeah. Um, I, I want to make FSW the go-to sim. Fantastic. So, you know, we talked about the spotlights as well, um, and other sims, and just attended the um, X-Plane one as well, mm -hmm. and a big focus for them was about virtual reality. Mm -hmm. um, so there's been a few comments, and you said it yourselves when you released the Early Access, that VR wasn't a prominent feature for you at the start. Yep. Kind of, do you have a timeline, or when can users start to kind of expect virtual reality to go into I'll be completely world? honest, no, we don't have a timeline, and we, we don't put a defined point in time on a roadmap for VR and there's a good reason for that. Uh, we're a business, we look at the future, we look at those opportunities and there isn't money to be made in that for us right now to, that would account for our investment in it. Um, do I just want to enable VR so that people can play Flights in World in VR? We could probably do an easy kind of bolt-on experience to it but that really isn't what Flights in World is about. If we go into VR we'll go into it with the same kind of um, vigor that we had for the aircraft and try to make a positive difference. All the development team want to get on board that. We love it and we've yeah. got actually quite a bit of expertise on that now that we've been hoovering up. I'm sure we will get there, but I'm not going to commit to doing something uh, unless it's the very best. Great. So I think as well what we've seen, there's been an awful lot of talk of how you've developed and how you've um, kind of gone from an old ESP engine to kind of developing into where FS World is today. And something that I personally quite enjoyed was your announcement trailer, because mm -hmm. it de delivered kind of a behind the scenes look of, you know, the process and we saw some, you know, 3D modeling and all that kind of stuff. So perhaps maybe you want to see some, or would you do um, some more of these like development diaries in the future to see how things are progressing um, and to kind of keep that communication with the community open? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think we love doing those. Um, we've already started rolling out updates for the core product that we just roll out as free but as part of early access that, you know, we're trying to either fix issues, uh, improve certain things. There'll be some updates coming out, I'm sure, on, on lighting and big hitter features like, you know, an overhaul to the weather engine and all sorts. Mm -hmm. And it would probably be quite exciting to do dev diaries around those. And I'm sure um, the uh, PR team are looking at that at the moment because that's exciting. We're really yeah. excited about it as well. So we don't do the dev diaries for the routine updates that we're going to put out every week, mm -hmm. but for the big features that are coming down the, the road, certainly. Fantastic. So, being at Flight SimCon, I have to ask you, what are you personally looking forward to um, at the event this year? Uh, I'm looking forward to being able to demonstrate Flight Sim World to people, and in particular, talk about it and defend our interests in the panel that's, that's being held this afternoon where we're talking about the future of flight simulation. Um, 
and that will be interesting where we've got prepared and we've got x -Plane and FSW is represented finally. So I feel as though we've entered into this space. Yep. We're still the new kids on the block, but um, hopefully people will realise we're not these ev evil kind of crazy people and we care about what we're doing. We want to make a great flight simulator and we're here and I think we're, we're equal to the competition right now. Excellent. I mean, we are really looking forward to this discussion because I think there's going to be lots of really detailed questions not just for you, but for the other guys mm. as well. So mm. I don't think you have much to worry about. <laughs> we'll see. You know, ev everyone's going to have something to say and everyone's got an opinion, like you said, as well. Sure. So looking forward to that. Um, is there anything else you want to add before we wrap up? Um, no, I just want people to know that, uh, you know, I care about this um, hugely. This is really important to me. Mm. Um, this is probably, since I've been working in the industry for 20 years, my biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't have thousands of developers like I mentioned earlier and loads of money to spend on it I try to win the hearts and minds of the business so that they can give me the freedom which they currently do you know all credit to them they allow me to do what I need to do and I have a fantastic team that works with me on making what I believe will become the go-to flight simulator that is my challenge it doesn't happen overnight but watch this space we'll get there excellent well thank you very much Steve for uh, taking the time to speak to us um, thank you very much for watching as well. Um, there's going to be loads more uh, Flights in World content coming soon and plenty more from FS Elite as well. Thank you very much and take care. Thank you. Thank you.